Hi. The aim of this video is to show you a little about how minerals can be grouped together and classified on the basis of their chemical composition. But first, we need to think a little bit about what minerals actually are. The definition of a mineral has three key points. It's an inorganic natural material. Materials like coal, for example, don't count as minerals. It must have a specific chemical composition. We define minerals by their chemistry. And finally, it needs a characteristic atomic structure. Those elements that make up the mineral need to be put together in a very specific way to make an individual mineral. Minerals that differ in either their chemical composition or their atomic structure will be different minerals. They'll have a different name, different classification. An example of this that we're familiar with is halite, otherwise known as rock salt. Rock salt has a fairly simple chemical composition. It's a compound of sodium and chlorine. And its, and its atomic structure is this very regular cubic structure. One atom of sodium bonded with one atom of chlorine. That has an effect then on its physical properties. The cubic crystals you can see on this um, photograph, for example as well as the other properties uh, that we're familiar with, like its solubility, taste, cleavage, and hardness, for example. Now, there are lots and lots of different types of minerals. We've identified over 5,000, with new ones being discovered all the time. Although it has to be said, the new ones that are discovered tend to be extremely small in quantity. You shouldn't be intimidated by this vast range of minerals. We can look up things um, that show us some of this diversity. But in terms of understanding geology, there's actually a small, much smaller number, maybe 50, that make up virtually the whole of the Earth's crust, possibly even boiling it down to 20, as we've done for the A-level geology syllabus, that will make up maybe 99% of the Earth's crust. So it's these common minerals that we need to focus on. I said the classification is based on the chemistry. The simplest type of chemistry we're going to come across with our minerals are what we call native elements. These are elements that uh, the whole mineral is just made up of one element. They're surprisingly unusual. We have ones here like copper, native copper, an unusual ore of copper. Most of the time we find it as a compound. Famously, diamond is a mineral which is an, a native element, as is graphite. We'll talk a bit more about those in a moment. Uh, sulfur that we find around volcanoes, the yellow encrustations around their volcanic vents, will be a native element. Perhaps most famously, gold. Uh, is found as a native element. Diamond and graphite show us the importance not just of the chemistry, they're both made of just carbon, but also the chemical structure. The differences in chemical structure created as a result of the heat and pressure at which these minerals uh, form create very, very different minerals. One extremely soft that we use its uh, grey streak for uh, and its conductivity powers very frequently. The other, one of the hardest substances we know. The reason for that difference is the way these carbon atoms are structured. In graphite we see uh, sheets of carbon atoms. With very weak bonds between them. It makes it very soft. Diamond, on the other hand, has this very tight uh, interlocking structure. It makes it extremely uh, hard.
comparing the other properties that we see of the minerals, we can see the effect of this. The same chemistry, very, very different uh, properties because of that difference in structure. Most minerals, though, are compounds. Now, these compounds we can divide into six groups. Oxides, sulfides, halides, carbonates, sulfates, and silicates. We've already looked at the uh, elements that make up the crust. And we know that we have metals then that bond with other elements. It's these that make the compounds. So, for example, for oxides, we have uh, a group of metals that bond with oxygen. A number of different minerals will be formed this way. The one you're most likely to come across is hematite, uh, an iron oxide. There are others, so magnetite, um, which is a naturally occurring magnet. Uh, cassiterite, uh, one of the main ores of tin. We often use minerals like this as ores because it's relatively easy to separate the metal from the oxygen. Another group that are often used as ore minerals are the sulfides. This is where we get a metal bonded with just sulfur. Galena, uh, lead ore, sphalerite, which is zinc ore, chalcopyrite, which is a cop the, the main copper ore, uh, and also uh, iron pyrite. And we don't use that as an ore mineral uh, because the, it's much easier to get it from an oxide than it is from a sulfide. These create some very distinctive uh, minerals that we will be learning to identify from their properties. The halides are a group of mineral where the metal is bonded to a halogen at. Uh, atom, such as fluorine or chlorine. There are two minerals on our list which fall into this, fluorite and halide. A very common group of compound minerals are the carbonates. In particular, calcium carbonate makes a mineral called calcite, which makes uh, a rock we call limestone. Very, very common. There are other carbonate minerals, though, such as one of my favourites, malachite, copper carbonate. With sulfates, again, we see metals bonded with sulphur, but in addition to this, we see oxygen as well. Barite, barium sulfate, uh, a very useful mineral, a uh, variety of different uses, um, is such an, uh, a mineral. Gypsum, again, another very useful mineral, particularly uh, for making things like plaster, uh, as calcium sulfate. But the most common group of rock forming minerals are the silicates. If you look at your mineral data sheets, you'll see that most of those rock forming minerals are silicates. This is where we get the metal bonded with silica, silicon and oxygen. Now we're going to talk a great deal more about this in class because the silicates form the vast bulk of the Earth's crust. There are lots of different minerals in this group. Quartz is an important one. An important mineral that we'll need to learn how to identify. The very common, but perhaps slightly less uh, immediately recognisable, is the group of minerals we call the feldspars. There are different types of feldspar we, we need to look at. We differentiate between uh, perhaps two of the more obviously different ones, uh, orthoclase feldspar and plagioclase feldspar. We also 
look at the ferromagnesium minerals. These are silicates that are bonded with iron and magnesium. Very distinctive and very important group. We need to think more about these minerals and what they can tell us about rocks. But for now, we need to make sure that we understand what these minerals are made of and how we can group them together. Don't forget to come to class with your interesting question. I'll see you then.